Well, hey everyone, and welcome to the first week of our brand new series called Who is Jesus? Now, if you've been with us for the past few weeks, you know that we switched our routine up a little bit. We stopped doing Orange for a little while, and we started doing uh, the Bible Project videos, but we're going back to Orange curriculum this week. So instead of there just being an intro and then going to have to go to a whole separate video, we're going to go back to the structure where we do intro, then the teaching video, then outro, all in the same video. So you don't have to worry about clicking any other links. It's all just right here. All right, before I send you into today's teaching video, I'm just going to get you to grab a Bible because today we're going to be looking at Matthew 27 verse 50 to 51 and John 15 verse 15. Okay, I'm going to send you off into the teaching now and then I will be right back here again after to do a little outro. Easter is one of my favorite holidays, and it's not just because the candy is amazing. I mean, I'm gonna save this for later. I love Easter because it gives us a chance to remember all that Jesus has done for us. It gives us a chance to get to know him in a new way. And that's a really big deal because knowing Jesus changes everything for us. I asked what questions my students had about Jesus, and this is what they said. Is Jesus even real? Am I supposed to talk to Jesus? Is Jesus really God too? How do I know I'm close to Jesus if I can't see him? It's a really good question. Was Jesus a man who actually lived on earth? What does it mean to have a relationship with Jesus? And what did Jesus really do for me? I mean, these are all such really good questions. And I've asked quite a few of these questions myself. If you've asked any of these questions before, I want you to know it's okay to ask. In fact, Jesus wants you to ask because asking is what helps you know him more. And that's really the goal of this whole faith thing. So before we jump into discovering more about who Jesus is today, let me tell you a quick story. There was one time I decided to go on this kind of academic camp thing and it was all these different kids from different schools that gathered together at this university and I was the only student from my school that got accepted to go. And this was in a totally different place. I had to drive, we had to like drive three hours to get there. And the first thing we did was eat dinner and I didn't know anybody. And so I sat in this big cafeteria all by myself eating alone and it was terrifying. Have you ever been there? The truth is we all know what it's like to feel alone. Even if you're in a room full of people, when no one really knows you, it can feel like a really lonely place. You probably know what I mean. Even if you have a million friends, a group to hang out with, a constant conversation with friends on apps, 20 group texts going at the same time, a team to support you on, a, on and off the field, a group of friends to sit with at lunch, you still might deal with a feeling of loneliness. Maybe you even have a little voice in your head that tells you, you don't really fit in and no one really knows you. and You'll never really feel connected to someone else. Have you ever been there before? Take a second to think about it. The reason I know you might think this, well, besides the fact that I've thought it at a time or two myself, there's actual research that proves it. Let's say these guys represent actual people. In a study of middle and high school students, 40% of people said they felt lonely or disconnected from others most of the time. That's four out of 10 people that probably feel alone or left out on a regular basis. Four of the 10 of your friends. Four out of 10 of the people here at church or in your class. Even when you're surrounded by others, 40% of teens still feel disconnected. In fact, for most of us, it can feel like there's something that keeps us from being with other people. I mean, sure, we can see or hear what's going on over there, but there's something that's keeping us from being able to join in. There's something that's keeping us from connecting. There's something between us 
and them, and that makes us feel like we're left all alone out here. So what if I told you that you're not alone? For starters, you're definitely not the only one who feels this way. Everyone struggles with this feeling of being disconnected or alone at times. But beyond that, you're not alone because of Jesus. Now listen, I know you might be thinking, not alone because of Jesus? I mean, what does that even mean? Well, I say it because I think it's true. And maybe you do too. Maybe the idea of Jesus being with you makes things feel better for you. Or maybe the idea of Jesus being with you is just confusing. Maybe the idea of Jesus, God's son sent to earth to save us, doesn't change all that much for you. The idea of a God who seems far away, old and distant is not exactly helpful. It doesn't feel helpful when your friends leave you out or you feel like an outsider in your own family or when you just feel disconnected. In those moments, what does Jesus mean for you really? If that's how you feel, I get it, but stick with me because I think that by asking questions about who Jesus is, we'll discover just how much knowing Jesus really does change everything, including when we feel disconnected. Conversations about who Jesus really is come up a lot around this time of year. Easter celebrates the moment in history when Jesus died and then came back to life. And while it's this really amazing, incredible thing that happened, it's also something that has made people ask a lot of questions along the way. Questions about who Jesus is and what his death on the cross means for us. And since it's okay to ask questions when it comes to our faith, I wanna dive into some of that stuff with you today. To kick things off, we're gonna jump right to that moment at the end of Jesus's life. But first, let me give you some background. Jesus lived in ancient Israel and grew up in first century Jewish culture. A huge part of life for people then was the temple. The temple was where people went to worship God. It was also the place where all the important stuff in town happened. And certain parts of the temple were only for certain people. For example, if you weren't Jewish, you had to stay on the outside. Women, even if they were Jewish, could only go so far. Jewish men could go inside, but only to certain places. Priests could go farther. You see, the whole thing was built so that people kept their distance from the center of the temple, a place called the Holy of Holies. That's where God was. Because God was so holy, people couldn't get close. So that part was sectioned off by a curtain. In fact, even the most important priests were only allowed to go behind the curtain one time per year. The point of this whole history lesson is this. The culture Jesus lived in had a lot of separation. The people literally couldn't get behind the curtain. They were disconnected. People were separated from each other. And most importantly, everybody was separated from the place where God was. And without Jesus, everybody would have stayed separated from God. Back then, people asked a lot of questions about Jesus too. Why did Jesus come to earth? What was he trying to do? Was he really the son of God? Some people thought he was just a really good teacher. Other people thought he was a political leader who would overthrow Roman rule. Nobody expected that same Roman government would actually arrest Jesus and sentence him to death, but they did. When it was happening, it was awful. Jesus was tortured and beaten and insulted by those who were torturing him. But as this was happening, God was using this moment to do so much more. Check this out. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into from top to bottom. I mean, this is a huge deal. Remember that curtain, the one that separated God from everyone else? At the moment Jesus died, the curtain was ripped apart. The days of separation were over forever. Before, only once a year could the most important priest ever really get close to God. But in a moment, Jesus changed everything. Jesus made it perfectly clear that there would never be separation between God and God's people again. It changed everything for the people back then, and it can change everything for us today too. Your friends may feel distant, but God isn't. You may feel like other people don't know you or want to be close to you, but God does. You may feel like you have to be good to be around God, but you don't. Nothing you do or don't do can separate you from God who loves you. One of Jesus's friends, a guy named John, 
wrote down everything about his experience with Jesus while he was on earth. John saw it all, including the way Jesus' death and resurrection changed everything. I think one of the things John tells us that Jesus said can help us understand who Jesus is to us. Take a look. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. We are friends with Jesus. That's so amazing to me. Jesus as my friend? I love that thought. But as cool as that is, I think there's more to it than that. It's not just we're friends so we can hang out and go camping and stuff. It's we're friends because I'll turn the world upside down, defeat death, and even tear the curtain in two to prove that we are connected. You and I and all the people after you are connected. From now on, you're always going to be connected to God. My death on the cross made sure that was possible no matter what. We can never be separated and you are not alone. In other words, because of Jesus, you can be connected to God. This is what Easter means for us. And this is who Jesus really is. He is the connection point from us to God. So even when you feel disconnected from your friends or people at school or even people at home, you never have to be disconnected from God. There is no curtain between you. God's close to you no matter what. Maybe you've never thought about Jesus like a close friend. Maybe you've believed the stories of who Jesus is from your grandma or someone at church or the Christians on TikTok. I wanna challenge you to find out for yourself. I want you to feel like you can ask the question, who is Jesus? Because it's okay to ask. That's exactly one of the reasons we have groups. So we can remind each other of what's true about who Jesus really is. That even when we feel far away, there's no separation. Because of Jesus, you can be connected to God. For some of you, this might be the first time you've realized that you can be close to God. If that's you, a huge step you can take today is to talk to a trusted adult, a parent, or your group leader about that. Talk to them about what it means to connect with God, to follow God, and to grow in your relationship with God. These are people who want to help you understand how knowing Jesus can change everything for you. Then. I want you all to try this. The next time you feel yourself feeling lonely or disconnected or separated, go to God. Tell God how you feel. Spend time with God. Reach out to a friend who you know will encourage you to remember what's true about God. You could listen to worship music or pray or write down your thoughts in your journal to God. Whatever this looks like for you, take a step to connect with God when you feel disconnected because no matter what, you can. Remember, because of Jesus, you can be connected to God. I want you to think about this. What if you're not as alone or disconnected as you think you are? What if nobody is? What if that thing in you that says, I feel alone and it shouldn't be this way, is a reminder that God didn't create you to be disconnected. God made a way to be close to you. Because of Jesus, you can be connected to God. And that means you never have to be alone. Well, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed today's video. You know, I just want to ask you one question before you head off for the day. And this is something that you can be thinking about for the next few days. What is one way that you can really connect with God? And instead of just coming up with an answer and then just moving on, I want you to actually try it out this week and see what happens. All right, everybody, that is it for week number one of our brand new series called Who is Jesus? And I hope to see you again very soon. See you guys later.